We begin today the Gemara on Daf Lamed Aleph, five lines from the top of the Yomad. This is the Sugya of Kibbut of Eimer. So the Gemara continues on this subject. There's other things as well that comes in there, some Agadita. Tani Tana Kameda Rav Nachman. So the Tana taught in front of Rav Nachman, Bizman Sha'odam Mitzayet, as Aviv as If a person causes pain to his father or mother, Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Ebesha says, Yofa, Sisi, I did a good, a good thing, Shalai Darti Beinayim, that I don't live amongst them. Shalmali Darti Beinayim, because if I am amongst them, Tziaruni, then the pain for the father and mother is causing Hashem himself pain. This is connected to the point we learned yesterday regarding the, in the positive sense, when there's Kibbud Aveim, then the Gemara says, then Yom Chabad the Ebesha, it's the Shloy Shashut Fim Vodam, the Ebesha is a partner with the parents. Omer Rabbi Yitzchak, Kol Ha'oyve Aveda B'Seyse, a person that does Aveda in, in hiding. Ki ilu doichik rag lishchina. It's like he's pushing away the feet of the shechina, meaning that uh, he's, he thinks to himself that the Ebeshter in hiding is not there with him and he doesn't see him. Shana ma'koyim ha'ashem ha'shamayim kisi. The heavens are, cons- are compared to Hashem's throne. Ba'aretz hadayim raglay. And the world below is like Hashem's footstool. So the raglayim, the gilu of the Ebesha that comes down into the world, is here below as well. And the person is being doichek, the raglayim of the Ebesha, when he makes believe as if the Ebesha is not here. Taisus of here actually adds to this and says that we're talking about a person that's able to overcome his Yetzirah, but he thinks that I don't have to. If I'm in hiding, then it's fine. The Ebesha is not here. Has for Shalom, such a kind of machshava. But a person that can't overcome his Yetzirah, it's a different story. He's not, so over here, if, if, what's better? A person should do Aveda publicly for everyone to see, and then he makes a Chilol Hashem, or, or to do it besides here. The text brings from the Gemara and Chagiga, a person that, he's, he, the fact that he runs away to a place where no one sees him, he's not doing it because he thinks the Abish is not here, but because he just can't overcome his temptation. The Gemara is not talking about such a person. Om Rabbi Shua ben Levi, Osir Adam Shiyahalech, Arba Amis Bekoimus Kufa. It's forbidden for a person to walk four Amis with a up, upright posture that he's walking with his head up in the ear, like the Abishta is not here. Shanema Muloichalar it's Kivaidai. The Abishta's glory fills every place in the world. Ravhune Bereidir Rav Yeshua Le Maski Arba Amis Begili Yarish. Ravhune Bereidir Rav Yeshua did not walk four Amis without his head covered. Omar he said, Shchine Lemailam Raishi. The Shchine is above my head. All right, so it's Yidua, that's the title of the word Yamuke, Yorei Eloikim. That's where the word comes from, there is a fear, fear from Hashem. So in Paiskim, based on this Gemara, there's a discussion whether, I mean, from the simple Pshara of the Gemara here, it's Mashman, that this was a special Hanhoge of Rav Hunu Bireide Rav Yeshua. So there are those that say, from Rishainim, that putting on a Yamuke is just a Midas Chsidis. But others say, no, from here we learn, from this Hanhoge we learn, that this is a Chiv, this is an obligation, because of the Shechina that's above a person's head. And the Bis Yosef Paskins and the Shulchan Aruch is brought that it's a chiyuv. The Alter Rebbe Shulchan Aruch actually adds another detail to this: that now that it became a chiyuv and everyone wears a yarmulke, it becomes not a chiyuv for another reason, because of the union of tznius, because the klal, the concept, the, the definition of tznius is any area in the person's <coughs> body that's usually covered has to be covered. So a yarmulke, which is a place that's usually covered by yidin, if it's uncovered, it's a lack of tznius as well. That's the Alter Rebbe's chiddush. So from when he did it, I guess he brought this new one hog and it became a chiyuv. That's uh, yeah, the halacha. Shol ben Almona Achas es Rebbe Eliezer. So going back to the halachas of Kibud of Aim, there was a son of an Almona. So in other words, the father already passed away. So he asked this Shaila from Rabbi Eliezer, Abba Oimer Ashkeni Mayim. My father tells me to bring him water. It's the same time my mother asks for a cup of water. Who do I serve first? So he answered him, Leave the honor of your mother, and do the honor of your father first. Because you and your mother are obligated to give honor to your father. So, so therefore the father comes first. That's the question he asked Rabbi Yezah. Then Balaf Neir Rabbi Shua, he asked Rabbi Shua the same question. And he gave him the same answer. So then he says to him, but my Rebbe, I have another question. What's if the father and mother, they're divorced? So you can't say then that the mother is supposed to give honor to the father, that he should serve the father first. So Rabbi Shua took a good look at him and he says to him, from between your eye uh, brows or eyelashes, I can see that your father passed away. He saw from his crying, 
from his eyes that that, that, uh, that he was an almana. So therefore, he tells him hatil lahem. So he answered him like he answered him the halacha, but he answered him in an interesting way. He said hatil lahemayim b'seifel. If you both your father and the mother, but they're divorced, and you have to serve both of them at the same time, so put a lot of water into a pail or a shisel, whatever. And then call to them like a, like a chicken. They call that 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 uh, call, and then they'll come and they'll take together. You can't serve one before the other. All right, so basically, the point here is that you can, you have to serve them in a way that you're serving them at the same time. You don't you don't give uh, one honor more than the other. As Rashi says, he said in this Lashon of a Schaik, because he was asking this question that wasn't relevant to him, so he gave him such a kind of an answer. Darshan, at the doorway of the, of the Nasi. What's the meaning of the Pasuk? It says, It's all kings of the world. So they thank Hashem. Because they hear the words of your mouth. So, It doesn't use a singular term, but it says, what is the Imre Picha? Why are all the kings of the world praising Hashem when they heard more than one of the Diburim of the Eibishter? What is this referring to? When the Eibishter said, by Asaras Adibris. So the first of the Asaras Adibris, So the nations of the world said, That the Eibishter is speaking to the Eden and he's demanding his own honor. Kiven, Shomarat. When they heard the Abish is saying to give honor to your parents, Khazru Vahoidu So then they came and admitted that they, what the Abish said in the beginning is, is not for his own honor. Just like the Abish wants a person to give honor to his parents. <coughs> and Abish is also a partner in that creation together with the father and mother, as we learned before. Rava Ma Rava says that this idea we, we can learn from another Pasik, Mehacha. Pasik says, Raish Devarcha Emes. The beginning of Hashem's words, and this refers to the Aseres Adibris. So the beginning of Hashem's words are true. So what does this mean? Raish Tevarcha, V'loi Saif Tevarcha. Why does the Pasuk have to say that the Abish's words are true? And why is it saying, has to emphasize that the beginning of the Abish's words are true? Ella, the answer is, because when it came to the beginning of the words of the Abish, there, there the Umas Eilam sort of said that the Abish is just saying, L'Kavad Atzmai. But then, M'saif Tevarcha, Nikesh Raish Tevarcha Emes. From the end, when they heard the end of the Abish's words, they came back and they learned out and they were made to the Abish's words in the beginning that, that it's, it's not covered atzme, but that the whole world is run by the Abish and the Abish's life and death is in the hands of Hashem and therefore you have to give him honor. That's how Rashi Taish is there. Okay, boy, my name Ravula. Ravula asks, that To what extent, how far does Kibbut Aveim go? <clears throat> Om Alehem, so he says to them, here comes the famous stories about Doma Benesina. Go and see what a guy in Ashkelon did with Doma ben Esina Shemai. One time, Bikshu Chachamim Prakmatia, Chachamim had something, a business with him. Beshishim Ribay Schar. And he would have earned 600,000 gold coins of Schar. Tremendous amount of money. Vahayim Avteach Munach Tachas Mina Shaysav Shalavev. But the, the key was below, the key for what he needed to give them was below the, his father's head, which was then sleeping. And he did not wake his father, he didn't cause him any pain to go and uh, give them the key for this. Okay, so we see how great over here Dhamma ben Asina was. He didn't, even for such a great earning, he didn't want to pain his father. Um, and you can make a point of here is, it's not just the fact that he gave up the money. There's two points here in the story. Number one, you see how much money he gave up. But there's another thing also. He could start making cheshbainis. He'll say, well, maybe my father would rather me become this rich and wake him up. He won't, if he'll find out why I woke him up, he won't be so upset. Point there is, when it comes to the midst of Kibbut of Aim, he was so concerned about his father's losing sleep that it didn't even dawn on his mind to make that cheshbain that maybe he was just, it, it, it didn't even, he didn't make this cheshbain bachlal. That's how far the midst of Kibbut of Aim goes. They asked Rabbi Yezer the same question, how far does Kibbut Aveim go? So, so he said another story with this, with Dome ben Asin. So what's the story that he said about Dome ben Asin? The Chachamim wanted to get one of the precious gems that are needed for the Eifai. That's what it says here in the Gemara, but... Taisa says, other Rishayim say that uh, it wasn't really for the Eifoid. The Gemara says Eifoid, but really the Choshen and the Eifoid are almost like one beggar there. They're connected to each other. And they needed really the one of the stones for the Choshen. And it says that it was the stone of Yashve, which is for Shevet Binyamin. And B'shishim Ribay Schar. 
and they were going to pay him again 600,000 gold coins. 800,000 gold coins. And the key was for, for what they needed for, for this uh, precious gem was under the father's head, which was sleeping. And again, he didn't cause his father any pain. The following year, the Ebishi gave him his reward. So in his, he, gave, he had a paraduma in his, by, by, by his animals. Nichnesu chach misrol that so the chachamim came to him and the amal lehem he says to the chachamim yedei ani bechem I know you sheim ani mevakish mekem kol mami shabayilam if I'll ask for you any payment of any money in the world for this atam noisimly you're going to pay me for this ella but however ain't ani mevakish mekem ala oisa mami shev sadati b'shvul kavod daba I just want you to give me the money that I lost for the covet of my father and they paid him that amount of money they wish to gave him back every penny that he lost for this kibud avayim. So we hear it. I mean, by kibud of aim, it says l'man yitov yamecha here in this world, right? But it doesn't mean that the Ebrister always pays back dafke in the seif. And the Rebbe points out in the letter that here you see in this story here regarding this guy that the Ebrister paid him back in the seif. But the l'man yitov yamecha even by l'am hazeh could be in different tefanim. There's another thing also you see over here from the whole mila that you see brought out benigayet to this guy dama benesina and his kibud of aim. But in the end of the story you see over here that sof sof is a guy. Meaning that when it came to the paraduma, so here he did a mitzvah, the Eibush's mitzvah, kibud avayim, and the schar for that is bli gvul, schar mitzvah mitzvah, which is, but he wants to get the payment, that money that he lost, he was, he wanted to get that payment back for, for what he lost. So look, here's an individual that's not commanded to do a mitzvah. This is the kind of reward that Abish gives him. One that's commanded to do a mitzvah. Most definitely gets much more schar than this. One that's commanded and does the mitzvah is much greater than one that's not commanded. Now the Gemara brings in connection to this that Amar of Yosef in the beginning, I would say, man dahava amali, Allah Rabbi Yasef was blind. Right? Mother brings in a lot of places, Rabbi Yasef was a summa. So in the beginning, he said, Man da amali, Allah Rabbi Yehuda, the Amma, Summa Pata Mina Mitzvis. Whoever tells me that Allah is that a person that's blind is Pata from Mitzvis, Avidna Yemitavala Rabbana. I'll make a day of celebration for the Rabbanan because the Ha Loy Mifkidna, I'm blind and I, I'm not obligated to do mitzvis. For Havidna, and I'm still doing it. So in the beginning, he thought that if you're not mitzvah v'aiseh, that's a higher level. Hashte the shemita lahod amar abchanina gadol mitzvah v'aiseh yesu mishenim mitzvah v'aiseh. Now I heard that the one that is commanded is actually greater. So that Rab, on the contrary, man domeli the ein alochik Rab Yehuda, the one that will tell me that we don't paskin like Rab Yehuda. Avidna yeh mitavol rabbanon. I'll make a big yom to for the rabbanon that I can fulfill a mitzvah and be commanded to fulfill this mitzvah. See, this, this is the, the famous Gemara about Mitzvah Vaisa that's brought many, many times in Chassidus. What's the Pshat Taka? Why is a Mitzvah Vaisa on a greater level? Taisus over here says the Pshat is because a person that's Mitzvah Vaisa, so he has, he's more concerned about, about doing the Mitzvah and there's more worry and more involvement that goes into it. And the, I think in Taisus Harash, he adds even more that the Yetzirah that knows that your Mitzvah Vaisa tries to disturb the person even more. So there's a greater effort that goes into the fulfillment of the Mitzvah. Person that's not mitzvah v'aisa, he does it. But in the end of the day, he could, he's not with that pressure, so to speak. In the end, he could always tell himself, "If I don't want, I don't want." It's more more calm. He's not the involvement is not as much. But in Chassidus, it says the famous pshat that a person that's not mitzvah v'aisa, whatever a person does in this world with his own kayach, in other words, with, with, without that command, without that special nisunis kayach from the Ebrish there in a mitzvah, so then he could only reach to the level that a nivra could reach to his source, the level of a lakus that's related to a human being in this world. Or the mitzvah asylumus. When a person does a mitzvah, the Abish that commands you to do a mitzvah. The command is not just a command. It's it's the Abish opening himself up, allowing you to connect to him on a level that's beyond the reach of a person. So it's be'ein arech. It's godl mitzvah v'vaisa. And it's simple pshat of the words of the Gemara. The mitzvah, the tzivoy, is a connection to the Abish that's beyond the mitzvah of the person. Kiyosir Avdimi, continuing here now again on the, the Indian of kibud of aim. When Avdimi came, Omar he said, pa machas lovish. This is going back actually to uh, Dom ben Essina. So he was once wearing a very expensive silk garment that was laced with gold in it. He was sitting amongst the great uh, noblemen of Rome. His mother came and she tore it off of him. She hit him on his head and she spit in front of him. So she obviously had lost her mind. And 
and he didn't embarrass his mother. Tani Yavimi Bereid Rabavo. Rabavimi taught in the name of Rabavo how a person should do Kibbut of Aim. Yesh Maichalov of Pisyaini, there could be a person that feeds his father Pisyaini, which is a fat, good, Gishmaki bird, that a uh, very, very good meat. But nevertheless, he is, uh, it, it causes this person, he's doing Kibbut of Aim, but it gets the person that's doing this in such a way out of the world. But another person is grinding for his father and the food is not maybe not as gishmak, but he's working hard to serve his father. And it brings this person to Chai Yolam Abba. So basically the point here is it depends how the person does it, with what attitude, how he brings it to his father. And the text is here in the bottom of the Yomad. He brings over here stories from this that it says in the Yerushalmi that there's one person that gave his father Every day he would give him this expensive food, delicious foods, and his father asked him, where do you have all this food every day for me? So he says to him, don't worry, you just chew away, just eat, don't worry. Like, he spoke to him in a very, very not respectful way, and so he's feeding his father this good food, but he embarrassed his father. When there's another person that uh, he was toichem berichayim, and then uh, the here brings that, the, he, that his father, then was called to go and work for the king to do uh, this kind of a work. And he tells his father, don't worry, I'm going to do the work instead of you. You just sit calmly, I'll take care of you. So you can, when it comes to this kind of work, if you do it in a way that you make your father feel like I'm taking care of you and you just sit and take care of yourself, then mevi l'chayi l'mabo. Right, so Rashi over here also actually brings the uh, same, thing, same things over here on the top of the Yamad. Okay, Taisus Rashi. But if you look over here on the top of Lamed Aleph on the base. Okay, Omer Abavo, Abavo says, Kogayin Avimi Biri. So, my son Avimi, Kiyem Mitzvah Kibbut. So, he's Mekayim, the Mitzvah of Kibbut of Aim, on a very high level, or a, properly. Chamisha Bani Samchi Havale. He had, or he had himself, five children that were very learned at. Smicha, they, if they, they, they knew that they have to be Mekayim Kibbut of Aim, and they also knew that they have to be Mechabed, their grandfather. So again, Chamisha bnei Sam Chavale la Avimi b'chayi Yoviv in the lifetime of his father. But but he have also Rabavo when Rabavo came. So who ran to the door to open the door for the father? Not the grandchildren. So he himself, Avimi would go himself. Kari and when he went, Kari Abava, he would go get the door and roet for Azul upasachle, and he would run to open the door for Omar in in Adam atoyasim. He didn't want his father even for a second to, 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 to be waiting. And so he would, every second running to the door, he would be screaming, say, yes, yes, I'm coming, I'm coming. Adam atoyasim, until he came to the door. Yoy Mechad, one day, so Avimi, his father, Abavo, said to him, Amale, Ashkemaya, give me to drink water. At the icy lay, by the time he brought the water to him, in Nimnim, his father dozed off. So Gachin Koy Ale, he he bent down and stood there with the water, Ah the Isar, until his father awakened. Uh, Stayer Milsa, because of this, the schus of this mitzvah that he waited there at that time. So what was he thinking about? So he was thinking about something in Taira. And the daughter Shavimi Mizmalosov. And Avimi Darshan, and he understood the Pshat of the capital Tilim, where it says Mizmala Asov, and Rashi says what he understood was the famous question on this capital, why does it say Mizmalosov? It should say Kinilosov, because right over there it continues, Bo Goim Nachlosecha, the Goim destroyed the base of Mikdosh. Why is this a song? So he understood that the Abish spills his anger on eight Simba Avonim, on the stones and bricks, and on the wood, and, and not on the Yidin. That, that was a tremendous, uh, it's a Mizmar, it's a tremendous Simcha. It's brought, uh, remember, it brought B'Shem Darizal that uh, at the Holy of Chamish is is really a day of Simcha, because after the Yerida of uh, Tisha B'Av, he says, really, the, the, by Tisha B'Av, when Yidin saw the destruction of the Beis Amigdash, he says, an unbelievable Lashen, that it would be Simcha G'day Levatsuma. They knew what level they're on. They knew what they deserved. And when they saw that they should destroy the base of English, right then there was a Simcha G'dayla Vatsuma that they should did not destroy them. And that Simcha G'dayla comes out later in Hamisha Sabah. But over here they say, so this is the title of Mizma Lasaf. So, like myself, the Ada Sina Mi Beirav. Beirav, when I come home from Yeshiva, so Abba Madlikosa, my father is serving me a a, a, kais, a, a glass of uh, something to drink, and Vime Mazgali, and my mother is also pouring for me, serving me. Hey Chiyavid, what should I do? He felt bad that his parents are serving him. He's supposed to be Mechabed them, and here they're serving him. Amalei, so Abai said to him, Me'imach Kabul, from your mother you should accept. 
And she won't be, feel bad for the fact that she's serving you. Adarabha, that's the pleasure of the mother. But from your father you should not accept. The Kivin, the Bar Toiruhu, since your father, he is a Talmud Chacham, and it's not, uh, this kind of work is not uh, what he should be doing for you, Chol Shadaite. So he's going to feel bad if he's the one that's serving you, if you accept from him this, this, this serving. Uh, so the Mepharshim here say, even though there's the Halacha, which we'll learn in the next Talmud, Ha'av Shomachal Al Kavayde, Kavayde Machal. A father could be Meichal on his Kavayde, but even after a father's Meichal on his Kavayde, nevertheless, you still should do whatever you can to be mechabinim, because you may still feel bad about this. So his mother, every time she had to go off the bed, so gachin v'salikla. Again, sorry, lemesek lepuria means to go up on the bed. So every time she would have to go up to the, on the bed, so he would bend down and lift her up to get onto the bed. Every time she had to come off the bed, she would come down, he would help her come down from the bed. Also, he came and he said his praise in Bismedrish about his level of kibbudain. And Taisus here actually says, brings from the Yishami another story about Abtarfin, that once, once his mother lost her, uh, her shoes or her uh, slippers, and she came out of bed and she was looking, she wanted to find her sh- sh- slippers, so he put his hands be- below her feet and had her walk around on his hands until she was able to find her slippers. So he was praising himself in the base Madrash. Omri lay, they said to him, Adayin lo higato lachatsi kibbut. You didn't even reach the half of the mitzvah of kibbut of him. Kulum zorka no aranki b'fanecha leyam v'loyach limosa. Did she throw your wallet full of money into the ocean and you didn't embarrass her? That would be kibbut of him. <laughs> Rav Yosef, ki avashoma, kal, kara, de imei. Rav Yosef, when he heard the sound of the footsteps of his mother, Omar, he said, Eikem, yikam me shechene dasya. Let me get, get up for the shechene that's coming. Omar, Rav Yechenen, Rav Yechenen said, Ashrei mi shaloi chamon. Fortunate is the one that didn't get to see his parents. And the reason he's saying this is because they, they, to be mechabed, parents properly, is, is not a simple thing. To, to make sure 100%, so you, if a person is not 100% in the kibbutz of him, so he says it's better if you don't get to see your parents. And the Gemara says, actually, when his mother was expecting him, his father already passed away. Right after his mother gave birth to him, so his mother passed away. So Hitaka never got to be Mekai in the midst of Kibbut Aveim. And the same thing was with Abaye. His parents died, uh, passed away when he was very young. In fact, the Gemara, Aini, is this true about Abaye? But for Omar Abaye, we have a lot of times in the Gemara, Abaye repeats things from his mother. Omar Ali Aim, my mother said to me different things. So the Gemara says that wasn't his mother. This was from the one that raised him. It wasn't his mother, though. Ravasi says the Gemara Havileahi Muzikena. He had a mother, an older mother, Umra Lay, and she says to her son Ravasi, Beina Takshitin. I want to have jewelry. Avadlo. So he made he prepared her, he gave her jewelry. Then she says to his son, her son, Beina Gavra, I want to get remarried to someone. Get me a husband. So he says to her, Naayinloch, we'll try to find for you a husband. So she says to her son, I want to have a husband that's just beautiful, as, as great as you. So basically he realized that his mother lost uh, her mind, and if he's going to be around his mother, and he's going to have to do everything for his mother, he's not going to be able to do the mitzvah of Kibbutzim properly. So Shafka, he left her, and he went to Eretz Yisrael. Then Shoma the Kaozla Basrei. When he was already in Eretz Yisrael, he finds out that his mother is coming after him to Eretz Yisrael. No, but so if his mother is coming, he has to be Mekayim Kibbutzim a hundred percent. So Asla Kamed Rabbi Yechen, and he says to Rabbi Yechen, Amalei. So he basically was asking Rabbi. He so asked him, Amalei asked Rabbi Yechen, Ma'u Lotzis Me'eres L'Chutz Laaretz. Am I allowed to leave Eretz Yisrael to go greet my mother that's coming? So right. Usually you're not allowed to leave Eretz Yisrael for no reason, <clears throat> for no good reason. Amalei Osser, you're not allowed to leave Eretz Yisrael. Likras imamau. So he asks Rabbi Yechonah, but how about to go greet my mother? Am I allowed? Amalei eni yedeya. So Rabbi Yechonah says, I'm not sure if you're allowed to go and greet your mother for this. If you're allowed to go out of Eretz Yisrael to greet your mother, you can wait until she comes to Eretz Yisrael. Israch porte. So he delayed. He waited a little. Hada osa. He came again to ask Rabbi Yechonah. Amalei asi 
Nisrat Seisal. So he was begging, he was like sort of asking Rabbi Yechini, he wants to go and greet his mother. He says, Asi, so you've, you've made, you've got your way. You want to go out, go, you can go greet your mother. Nisrat Seisal Lotzeis, to go out in Merz Yisrael. And he, he benched him, Hamakim Yechzir Chalisholem. The Abisha should return you in peace. So he felt bad after this that he like sort of forced a heter out of Rabbi Yechanan to go greet his mother. Asala came to Rabbi Lazar, came to Rabbi Lazar, one of Rabbi Yechanan's students. Amalei, chas v'shalom dilma mirsach rasach. Could it be, God forbid, that uh, I made Rabbi Yechanan angry at me? Amalei, Rabbi Lazar says, my Amalach. What did Rabbi Yechanan tell you when he gave you the heter to leave? Amalei, he said to me, Amokim yachzir chalishalom. He gave me the heter and he said, I should return you in peace. Amalei, v'yemisu de rasach. If he was upset at you, loyavim avarach loch. He wouldn't have benched you this way. Then Adahachi Vahachi in between Shama he heard La Araina de Kasi that his mother had passed away and she was coming in a Ara in a coffin. Omar, so Abasi said, Iyadi Loinafki. Had I known this, that she passed away already, I wouldn't have gone out of Eretz Yisrael. So the mitzvah to greet the mother was only if she was alive, but to go out of Eretz Yisrael for this, he wouldn't have left. We learned, a person has to honor his parents in their lifetime. And he honors even after they pass away. In their lifetime, what's the honor? If he's in a place where he knows that people respect his mother or father, father we're talking about here, and he can say, he could say the ask of people to do things for himself or in the honor of his father. Send me for my own sake, or do things quickly for my sake, or patruni bishvilatsmi, take care of me, or let me go for my sake. So if he knows that his father's name is very honorable, so he should use his father's name for things that he wants done, so like this it will only bring more honor to his father. The after his parent, his mother, father passes away, so then what is the covet for the father? If he's saying something in the name of his father, a halacha, or something in Torah, or something in the name of his father, he shouldn't say, this is what my father said. This is what my father, my man, my teacher said, and he adds, which means that after a person passes away, and he's going to Shemaim, and he's being judged, any judgment that would be on him should come upon me. I am the... The atonement for, for his passing, that whatever has to happen should come to me. Hani Mili, when do you add this term of Areni Kapodis Mishkovoi? That means good. I mean, Rashi says, uh, anything negative that would happen to him should come upon me. But for Hani Mili, when do you say this, this expression of Areni Kapodis Mishkovoi? Just the first 12 months. Because in the first 12 months, that's when the Neshama Lamayla is being judged. The honor for the father is that you add these words. When he's darshaning in public and he's saying that then in those times the chacham would darshan and he wouldn't speak loud enough everyone to hear him. He would say the halacha and then there was a meturgeman that was his interpreter or someone else that would come and say it for everyone else. So the Chacham, when he's saying something in the name of his father, he, he doesn't say, he doesn't spell out the name of his father and his, uh, and, or the name of his teacher. He just says, my father said so, my, my father, my teacher, but he can't say the name of his father. Turgamon, but the Turgamon does not change the name of the father or the teacher. So the explains this halacha. Avua deman. When it says here, the fa- the, we're talking about the father, that the, that the Chacham himself has to change and not use the name of his father, and the Turgamon is not. Whose father are we talking about? Ilema, vod the Turgamon, is this the father of this Turgamon, the interpreter? Why doesn't he have to change and not use the name of his father? Otto Turgamon lav bar the Turgamon himself is not obligated in the midst of Kibadav. Eloma Rabbe, the Pshar here is, Shem Oviv Shal Chacham, Vishem Rabbe Shal Chacham. It's the father of the Chacham, so when he says this halacha, he doesn't say his father's name, but the Turgamon does not have to say the same thing as this Chacham himself. He could say the name of the Chacham, of, this, of the father, father of the Chacham. Kiha, the Mar Baravashi, as it was with Mar Baravashi, the son of Ravashi. Ki Avadarish Bepirke, when he would darshan in the Shir, so Iyo Omar, Mar Baravashi himself said, Oma Abamari, or Iyo Omar, he would say Abamari, that. Um, that's how he would refer to his father, my father, my teacher. Va'amayrei but then the, his meturgeman, he would say, Hachi Omar Avashi. This is what Avashi said.
Okay, one more halacha here. Taner Abonam, we learned in Abraisa, Ezehu Moira, Ve'ezehu Kibud. What is the mitzvah of Moira Aveim? To fear parents. And what is the mitzvah of honoring parents? Moira means, Le'oimed B'mekaymai, you don't stand in a, in a designated place that he has. He has a designated place where he sits and or where he stands and learns, where he sit, stands and talks with his uh, the Zakanim that he discusses things with. You don't stand in his place. Not to sit in his designated place. And not to say against his opinion. And also, if his father is a, a, a Chacham and there's an argument and he's standing there together with his father, he shouldn't even come and, and chime into the conversation and say, Oh, I agree to my father. My father's right. That's also, that's not a derech. Even if he's agreeing to his father, it's not a derech. Not that it's opposite of Meirave. And Kibud is, to honor is, Machil or Mashke, to give to eat and drink, Malbish and Machase, to help them get dressed, and so on, Machnis and Moitzi, to help them come in and go out.